So today we're taking a look at conspiracy theories that actually turned out to be true and the first one of which is Project Sunshine. Project Sunshine was a series of research studies that began in 1953 to ascertain the impact of radioactive fallout on the world's population. The project was initially kept secret and only became known publicly in 1956, commissioned jointly by the United States Atomic Energy Commission and USAF Project RAND. Sunshine sought to examine the long-term effects of nuclear radiation on the biosphere due to repeated nuclear detonations of increasing yield. Project Sunshine sought to measure the global dispersion of SR90 by measuring its concentration in the tissues and bones of the dead. Of particular interest was tissue from the young whose developing bones have the highest propensity to accumulate SR90 and thus the highest susceptibility to radiation damage. So the theory was that they were stealing dead bodies to do the radioactive testing. And for many years, this was just a theory until a British newspaper reported that British scientists had obtained children's bodies from various hospitals and shipped their body parts to the United States. A British mother had said that her stillborn baby's legs were removed by British doctors and to prevent her from finding out what had happened, she was not allowed to dress the baby for the funeral. From there an investigation was launched and the truth turned out to be that the government was actually stealing parts of dead bodies. And because they needed young tissue, they recruited a worldwide network of agents to find recently deceased babies and children and then take samples and even limbs without the permission of the more than 1500 grieving families. Next up is a pretty popular theory that a lot of us still debate today and that is that the government tamper with products we use on a daily such as food and water and I think more so after you hear the outcome of this theory. The prohibition started in 1920 and by 1933 more than 10,000 Americans had been killed by poisoned alcohol and that was the theory that the alcohol had been poisoned by the government. Doctors were accustomed to alcohol poisoning by then and the bootlegged whiskies and gins not only made people sick but there were also multiple cases of hallucinations and of course deaths more frequent than usual. This outbreak was bizarrely different. The deaths as investigators would shortly realise came courtesy of the US government. Manufacturers of industrial alcohol had been mixing their products with dangerous chemicals for years prior to prohibition. But between 1926 and 1933, the federal government pushed manufacturers to use stronger poisons to discourage bootleggers from turning the alcohol into moonshine. In December 1974, Seymour Hersh published an article in the New York Times that made the United States Congress look into just what its internal and external intelligence agencies were doing in the name of the American people using their tax dollars. Mary Embry, who began her career in the CIA as a secretary in the Audio Surveillance Division before being promoted to the Technical Services Department, says she was asked to research a poison that would induce a heart attack in its victim but would be undetectable in a post-mortem. Uh, also I had to find one time they wanted me to find um, to find out if there was such a thing as um, as a poison that was undetectable especially one that seemed to uh, mimic a heart attack that would kill someone but it would it appear that they had a heart attack I did find such a thing. Embry's research led to the development of a top secret weapon known as the heart attack gun. It involved the freezing of shellfish toxin mixed with water to form a frozen dart which would then be fired from the heart attack gun. Once inside the body, the poison would then dissolve into the person's bloodstream and cause a heart attack leading the person to die. This was confirmed by the CIA in 1975 when they admitted to the weapon's existence, showing off the firearm in front of a crowd. The weapon was said to have been used during the Cold War. This is the one to settle back with, this Marlboro. If you think flavor went out when filters came in, Marlboro may surprise you. It's the filter cigarette with the unfiltered taste. It's common knowledge that cigarettes are extremely bad for your health, with 6 million deaths a year attributed to smoking. And as the decades pass, you see less and less people smoking cigarettes in society. You would have thought people could have guessed the damage it can do, even back in the day without research, and a lot of people did. 
However, through heavy advertisement and manipulation, cigarette companies were able to make the majority of the public believe they were healthy, with even legitimate doctors advising you not to worry. In 1946, R.J. Reynolds built a campaign on the slogan, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. So with that being said, there was still a big conspiracy that they had to be doing damage to the human body. And in 1964, the evidence against smoking was more than damning. The US Surgeon General issued a definitive report that linked smoking cigarettes with lung cancer. With cigarettes being highly taxable and addictive, you can understand why cigarette companies tried their utmost to hide the issues smoking could cause for their consumers. Keeps water filters off your lips. No filter feedback. Keeps it off your lips and her lips too. No filter feedback. Tobacco tastes best when the filter's recessed. Parliament, smoke Parliament, cigarette, no filter feedback.